So in this video we're going to explain how to calculate the number of lamps within a room area to provide an illuminance uh, on the surface. So basically what we have in this formula is we have so n number of lights is the illuminance times the floor area times the actual luminous flux of the lamps that you fit in the utilization factor and the light loss factor so let me explain what these two are the utilization factor so light loss factor so the moment we install our lights or should i say the moment that the lighting installation is put into service the lights start to get dusty uh, the lamp performance deteriorates so over a period of time um, the light will reduce the output from the light will be reduced so for that reason we put that factor uh, into our calculation the other uh, type of factor is the coefficient utilization now this is takes into account the uh, color of the room the walls, the type of finish on the walls, are the walls reflective, are they a matte finish, how many windows there are in a room. So the coefficient light utilisation, that is effectively what the light is going to be reflecting from within the room area. So the light loss factor is also known as the maintenance factor. So there was how often are the lights going to be cleaned. So typical factors if it's a clean environment, we can set that as 0.9, but if it's a very dirty environment, then we can set that at 0.7. And what that does is that increases how many lights we need. So often is the case on a brand new lighting installation, if you've just uh, finished an installation in a workshop area or like a supermarket, when you first turn those lights on, they're really, really bright and it's like, wow, you know, it's daylight. But over time, um, that will deteriorate and the light, especially all fluorescent lighting, when it starts to get old, starts to deteriorate and it goes yellowy. And um, what is for sure is that the electrical power consumption doesn't change, but the light output does change. So often was the case with fluorescent lighting uh, is that you would do what we call tube runs. So you would go six months or twice a year, you'd replace all the tubes in a factory and the light would be absolutely brilliant when you've finished uh, but that's expensive with led lighting that's uh, not the case um, as long as the fittings are cleaned then the, you don't get much of a light loss in fact you get zero light loss with led lighting uh, compared to that of fluorescent lighting uh, the only downside with led lighting is some people find it can be a little bit too intense um, they can find that it's it's a little bit too harsh on the eye so I still think there's ways to go with LED lighting but um, it's certainly more efficient than fluorescent lighting so let's look at uh, an example uh, on here so if we have a we're going to calculate luminous flux required to illuminate um, a, le a level of 200 lux so that's obviously what you see on the surface in a room measuring 8 meters be five meters so first thing we need to do is we need to um, obviously get this formula here and then we need to rearrange the formula in this so n is the number of lights e is the illuminance a is the area f is the light output uh, in lumens that's the utilization factor and that is the light loss factor also known as a maintenance factor um, so what do we need to work out? Well, we need to work out the luminous flux. So we need to make F the subject. Okay, so let's rearrange this formula to find F. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides by F. So let's do that. So we'll write this out here. Uh, transposition is one uh, area which a lot of uh, electrical students struggle with. So my advice is get on top of it early and then that way your life is a lot easier <laughs> so now we've done that we multiply both sides by f uh, that gets rid of that gets get that gets rid of that so we are left with now so n times f equals e a over u f times l f so now we need to get rid of n so what we do is we divide that side 
by n okay and obviously we put n on that side so that will go there like so well, because obviously the bottom lines are all times in yep see product is opposite of the quotient that will go that will go so then we'll be left with f is luminance times area put a little times in there over utilization factor times light loss factor times number of lights so let's look at our how many lights we've got so the area is 85 so the area 8 by 5 so that's going to be 40 meters okay the illuminance level is going to be 200 lux from the question um, the UF and LF are 0 0.7 0 0.8 so UF is not 0 0.7 and the LF is not 0.8 okay now as we don't know how many lights we've got at the moment we're going to set i'm going to set the uh, number of lights just to one so that's the that will give you know what the whole light would be then what we would do then is we would look at dividing that num level of luminous flux into the luminous flux per light and that will tell us roughly how many lights we need so we put uh, put those calculations in so f so we have 200 times 40 over 0.7 times 0.8 times 1 so when we've done the math on there we get 14,285.71 lumens uh, that's the total amount of illumination, uh, sorry, lumen output required to provide a 200 lux within a 5 v 8 meter area. So the question is, is how many of these, what sort of lamps are we going to fit? Well, I've just gone online. Uh, let's just say this was an office area. And you can see there that the power for each light there is 40 watts. So I've just searched for a 600-600 LED panel light. Um, it's white and it's giving out a lumens of 3400 so one panel light there so if I was to on my sketch there so one panel light is going to give out 3400 lumens yeah okay so how many lights do we need well all we do is we divide 3400 lumens into 14285.7 so number of lamps is the total lumens required divided by the lumen per lamp so our LED light 3400 lumens per lamp divide the two we get 4.2 well obviously you can't get 4.2 lamps so that's five lamps so if we look at the actual floor area then we just need to equally divide the lamps into five now you might ask yourself that's not a lot of lamps for that sort of area but remember we are only asked to provide 200 lux so 200 lux isn't really a lot of light to work in so if we wanted to increase the amount of illuminance at the floor then we would put more lights in so basically if we look at the recommended light levels so for sibsi the chartered institute of building service engineers guides they say the following levels so offices general work areas 500 lux uh, drawing boards 750 lux so it depends on the activity that's going on so if it's a computer room uh, like offices workstations and it's quite a low lux area because you don't want a lot of glare off the lights because obviously people are tuned into the um, tele uh, the uh, monitors retailing though is very high so thousand lux for your superstores your hypermarkets supermarkets so that's why when you walk in to these places you know, they're really bright you know uh, and obviously the lighting there the high bear lighting produces quite a lot of lumens 
your engineering workshops well it depends on the activity so if you arc welding uh, 300 lux um, right the way up to 2000 lux so this depends very much on inspection and testing so if you are building engines or assembling electronic circuits and so on then you're going to need a very very uh, high level of looks you know for the detail so this is a good guide uh, to give you an idea uh, you know on where to start and how many lights you would need so let's look at an example then um, and we're going to simulate a workshop area and we're going to work out how many lights we actually need to illuminate a engineering workshop up to a value of a thousand looks that's the next example so we have a factory floor or a workshop floor of 20 meters by 10 meters and we're going to use a 1500 mil 24 watt led tube and i've gone online and you can see just literally searching online for led data you can see that this is a 24 watt input power and the lumens is obviously 2600 and the efficacy lumens per watt is 109 um, what we're going to do here also tells you about the color temperature so it's nice and cool so 6500 that's going to be a nice white clear light so first thing we need to do is we're going to work out uh, how many lamps are required uh, and we're going to work out the total current taken to illuminate the area okay so the data we need a thousand lux in this area okay light loss factor is 0.8 um, that is a little bit steep but i'm setting up 0.8 anyway and the utilization factor is 0.7 so first thing we do is we write our formula down and we do the maths so we've got our formula so the illuminance required is a thousand the area is 10 meters by 20 meters okay and the lumen output per light is 2600 the utilization factor is 0.7 and the light loss factor is 0.8 so the total number of lights we do the maths so that's 137.36 lamps or 138 lamps so what that means is we would need to divide this floor area basically we would need to the 1500 each so you would space out that floor area to put multiple rows of lights uh, now if it was myself obviously i would put those over three phases so you put them with three phases so they're nice and balanced there there's no risk of stroscopic effect but obviously we need to keep our phases balanced so how much current is that going to take then well if there's 138 lamps so we've got 138 lamps yeah times and the input power is 24 so it's 24 watts so not a lot really if you think about it so so we get a total power of 3.31 kilowatts which is that's quite a bit okay but obviously we do that over three phases but we'll stay with one phase for now now if you look at the electrical data you can see there that the uh there is an inrush there um but basically ignoring the inrush for now power factor is greater than 0.9 and it says there the uh, number of devices per 16 um, uh, circuit breaker is 72 so c16 so you know you can only put 72 fittings on a c16 breaker um so let's have a little look and see um, how we can work out the uh, the current on this now okay one second so we've got so we know we've got 3.3 kilowatts the total power i times v times power factor we're going to set the power factor at 0.9 so we rearrange the formula for i power is v times power divided by volts times power factor so there's 0.9 worst case scenario and we get a total current of 16 amps now that's total obviously uh we've got 138 fittings so we're going to need to divide it up so my advice to keep it over three phases 16 over three gives us 5.33 amps per phase and that's so that's obviously 46 lamps per phase so 46 tubes and the to, to allow for a total inrush i would probably go for a c10 circuit breaker uh on there so over three phases and the beauty we're doing it over three phases is should you lose a phase in an emergency you don't lose you've got another two phases to keep you going okay i hope you found that useful um any questions please let me know thanks for watching